Okay, so welcome back ulit sa channel. So, ito na yung lesson 8 natin sa complex analysis ng continuity and limit of f of z. So, mag start ako sa limit, then mga counting theorem, then counting application or illustration using limit kasi bihira lang din naman itong gamitin dito. So, umahalag ka kasi talaga is derivative than integral. Then, next is continuity, then counting introduction about derivative. So, yung unang way para ma-prove or para mahanap mo yung derivative na isang complex variable. Okay, so una is the limit of f of z. So similar siya dun sa advanced calculus o dun sa analysis, dun sa, re sa real or sa advanced calculus na uh, epsilon delta definition. So let f be a complex function, then the limit of f of z as z approaches z naught, note hindi sub zero ba siya dun z naught, okay, is equal to w naught. So, if for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta such that f of z minus w naught is less than epsilon. Whenever 0 is less than the absolute distance of z minus z naught, less than delta. Again, z naught. So, nakaka-z naught. Nga sabi nga din, nakaka-z naught to last time. Okay, so, I have, I have a proposition dito na the limit of f of z is unique. So, dun din naman sa advanced calculus, kung maalala mo, pinrove natin na the limit, of a, the limit of a function is unique. So, same idea, same proof, paano siya gagamitin? So, ito yung gagawin natin. Okay, so, ano yung proof? Paano natin ginawa natin? So, naglet tayo ng limit ng f of z. Okay, so, naglet tayo dati ng, f, sa, ng limit ng f. Different limit. Pero at the end of, at the, end of the proof, pinakita natin na equal sila. Okay, so, similar dito. So, maglet tayo dito ng dalawang uh, limit ng f of z. So, una, so, ito proof. Okay, una, let limit ng f of z as z approaches z naught is equal to big w naught. Okay, so capital W. So, by definition of epsilon delta, definition ng limit, this is if and only if. Okay, so ano yun? For every epsilon, okay, so sabi, for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta sub 1. Bakit delta sub 1? Kasi gagamit pa tayo na isa. Greater than 0. Okay, then such that f of z minus big W naught is less than epsilon over 2. So, alalahanin mo na lang bakit ko in epsilon over 2. Whenever whenever 0 is less than z minus z naught less than delta sub 1. Okay, next. Let din natin na yung limit nya ng f of z as z approaches z naught is equal to w naught. This is if and only if. So note, w naught, mas malit na w. For every epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta sub 2 greater than 0 such that f of z minus w naught is less than epsilon over 2 whenever so whenever 0 is less than z minus z naught is less than delta sub 2 ok so kung naalala mo tinake ko rin yung maximum delta so choose delta so ito yun choose choose delta so kailangan kasi natin na isang delta lang ok so choose delta to be the maximum between delta sub 1 and delta sub 2. So, bakit maximum? So, mas better ng gamitin kay mas malaki bitin dun sa maliit. Kasi, doon ko mas malala, mas magandang layuan ko para matrace natin kung mala magkaiba ba or iisa. Okay. So, ang goal kasi natin dapat dito equal yung W na sa W. Okay. So, i-consider natin yung absolute distance. So, consider si absolute distance ng W na yung malaki minus W yung small. Okay, dapat at the end nito mag uh, less than epsilon siya. Okay, so naalala nyo ang ginawa natin dati. This is equivalent sa W naught. Okay, minus f of z plus f of z. Minus W naught. So nagdagdag lang ako ng 0 sa gitna, anong klaseng 0 yon? Minus f of z plus f of z. Okay, so wala akong ibang dinagdag diyan. 
So as in, nagdagdag lang W. Bakit ko ginagawa yan? Para mapasok ko yung assumption natin na epsilon over 2 saka epsilon over 2. Kasi gusto ko mahabol yung dalawang yan. Okay, next. And by grouping symbol, this is only equivalent sa uh, W naught minus F of Z. Okay, then the group. Plus, igugroup ko rin to, F of Z minus W naught. Okay, then by triangle inequality, this is less than or equal. Okay, this is less than or equal sa W naught minus F of Z. Then plus, F of Z minus W naught. Note na, pag nilabas ko yung negative 1 dito, magiging positive lang din kasi may absolute value. Okay, or hindi actually absolute value dito, dito is modulus. So, ilabas ko siya, modulus na is tawag uh, dito W pa rin. Okay, so next is Pag nilabas yun, ito ay equivalent Dito na lang Ito ay equivalent sa F of Z Minus W naught Plus F of Z Minus W naught Okay, so huwag kayo madidistract dun sa mga background music dito Dami kasi nagbibidyo ako Next is Using yung assumption na f of z minus w not is equal to epsilon is less than epsilon, then yung isa rin is less than epsilon. So, this is less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is equal sa epsilon. Okay, so, si w not minus yung small w not is less than epsilon. So, as epsilon approaches 0, so this implies that W naught minus W is less than 0. Tama? Which implies that W naught minus W is equal to 0. Tanggalin ko man yung absolute value na yan. Kasi negative 0 less than W eh wala naman negative 0. So, naiipit. So, which implies that W naught is equal to W. So, therefore, the limit of F of Z unit. Kasi nga, lumabas to. Okay, so ganun siya i-prove Similar din sa pag-prove na sa advanced calculus dati. Okay, so ganyan yung limit So ngayon, meron tayong theorem sa limit So, kung iisipin mo Yung function of complex variable, may dalawang component Si real part saka si imaginary part Okay, so hindi na concern natin dito So, may epekto rin yung real part saka imaginary part dito Pero gusto natin ma-verify kung Nari, kinuha ko yung limit lang ng real part Kinuha ko yung limit ng imaginary part I-add ko yun, equal lang din ba sa limit ng malaki Okay, so let's have theorems on limit. So number one, suppose that f of z is equal to u of x comma y plus i b of x comma y. Then z not is equal to x not plus i y not. Then w not is equal to u not plus i b not. Then the limit of f of z is equal to w not as z approaches z not. If and only if the limit of u of x comma y is equal to u not as x comma y approaches x not comma y not. Sorry, then and limit of b of x comma y is equal to b not as x comma y is equal to x not comma why not? So, hindi ko na naayos yung grouping symbol dyan. So, kama yan ha. So, parang naka-RCF worm. Okay. So, ito ang gusto na lang pahiwatig. Sinari, kinuha ko siya in a buo. May isa kong limit. Ako na may isa kong function. So, kinuha ko yung limit niya. Ngayon, yung susunod na gagawin ko, kukunin ko yung limit niya by parts. Kukunin ko yung limit niya in terms sa real part. Kukunin ko yung limit niya in terms sa imaginary part. After nun i-add ko. So, dapat equal yun dun sa natural limit na unang ginawa natin. So, illustration. Let's have illustration. For example, yung f of x ko oh sorry yung f of z ko is equal to 3xy squared plus i x squared minus y squared okay so ang goal kunin natin yung limit nung f of z as z approaches 1 plus i okay so yun yung kunin so una kukunin ko siya by uh, buo as a whole so this is equivalent sa limit as z approaches 1 plus i ng 3xy squared ok plus i ng x squared minus y squared ok so another pa nakapagtaka dyan sir z yung naga approach pero ang nakalagay dun is x and y. So, ngayon, ang gagawin mo, yung z is approaches 1 plus i. So, yung 1 plus i is naka-standard form. So, pwede kong palitan into ganito. Now, this is equivalent sa limit as x comma y 
approaches 1 comma 1. So, ito yung x, ito yung y, ito yung 1 plus. So, this is limit ng 3x y squared plus i times x squared minus y squared. Okay, next is, is substitute natin yung mga 1. So, apply the limit. So, this is equivalent only sa 3 times 1 times 1 squared plus i multiplied by 1 squared minus 1 squared. Okay, and this is equivalent sa 3 plus 1 minus 1 is 0. So, that is i multiplied by 0. So, this is equivalent sa 0. Okay, so yung limit doon f of z, as z approaches 1 plus i is equivalent sa uh, 0, uh, 3. Okay, so ngayon, ito rin sinasabi ko by parts. So, sa kabila. So, note na yung u of x comma y na ito is equal sa 3x y squared. Okay, ngayon kunin natin limit yan. So, yung limit as z approaches 1 plus i o 1 comma 1 ng 3x y squared. Okay, so equivalent lang siya, syempre sa ganito, 3 times 1 times 1 squared, which is equivalent sa 3. Next, yung b of x comma y is equivalent sa x squared minus y squared. So, kunin natin limit yan. Yung limit as z approaches 1 plus i, Okay, ng x squared minus y squared and that is simply 1 squared minus 1 squared which is equal sa 0. Note, ang sabi, ang final limit niya is equivalent sa limit nito plus limit nito. Ngayon, lalagyan ng i. So, yung limit daw ng f of z, ito yung sabi kasi, yung limit ng f of z, as z approaches z naught, ay equivalent sa limit ng u of x comma y Okay, as z approaches z naught. Okay, plus, may i dito, limit ng b of x comma y. As z approaches z naught. So, meaning, pag in-apply natin yan, that is equivalent only sa 3 plus i times 0, which is equal sa 0. Okay, so, may dalawang option ka para kunin yung limit. It's either by parts, kung nahihirapan ka, or directly. Okay, so ngayon, kailan ka mas maganda gumamit ng by part. So, possibly, pag, kunyari, in-apply mo yung limit, is naga undefined siya, or hindi mo nakukuha yung limit. So, meaning, parang, kailangan mo kunin yung left and right limit. Although, walang left and right limit dito sa uh, complex variable. So, kunyari man, ganun nangyari, naga undefined siya. So, ngayon, probably, pwede mong gamitin to. Ikunin mo yung limit by parts. So, malamang, dun makakapag-resolve ko, or makakapag-simplify ka pa. Mas madali. Okay, so ganun lang naman to kasimple. So ito yung state ni theorem number 1. So proceed tayo sa mga susunod pang theorem about limit. Okay, so this is theorem number 2. Now, suppose that the limit of f of z as z approaches z naught is equal to w naught, so small w, and the limit of g of z is equal to z approaches z naught is equal to big w naught, then the limit of f of z plus g of z is just i-add ko yung limit ng dalawa. Yung limit ng product nila is multiply ko lang din yung mga limit. Then lastly, kung hindi equal sa W yung W net na malaki, then yung quotient nila is equal lang sa quotient ng dalawang limit na nakuha natin. Okay, so ito common na common na sa inyo. Eh, from calculus 1 pa lang, calculus 2, calculus 3, then advanced calculus, ini explain na yan. So similar lang din dito yan. Okay, so kung ano man, kung nare, may limit na malaki, kung kaya mo paghihiwalayin, paghihiwalayin mo lang. Product, paghihiwalayin mo lang, mas madali. Okay, next is the stereographic projection. So, ulit ha, common lang yan. Hindi ko na masyadong i-elaborate pa yan. Kasi may kita nyo naman pa example. So, next is the stereographic projection. So, what is stereographic projection? So, ang sinasabi ni stereographic projection, so, kung nakikita mo dyan yung parang rectangle, yung rectangle, yan yung z-plane o yung ating complex plane. So, sa complex plane, ando yung mga complex number na kalatag. Ngayon, ang sabi, nilagyan siya ng sphere. Yung sphere is yung Riemann sphere. Okay, look, ito yung Riemann sphere. Okay, ito yung Riemann. Ah, nakalimutan spelling. Riemann sphere. So, I don't know kung double M or double N yun. Next, ito yung Z-plane. Okay, so, ano ba? Ini-explain ni stereographic projection. So, asabi ni stereographic projection, dun sa Z-plane, kuha ka ng point. So, kunyari, nag-plot ka. Kusa mo lang inilagay. Okay, nung pinat nyo, for example, pinat nyo dito, Okay, ngayon, ang goal mo, i-coconnect mo yung point na yun. So, gagawa ka ng 
uh, line, straight line, connecting dun sa end, dun sa North Pole, dun sa affinity. No, sa parang point at affinity. Point at affinity yung sa taas ng Riemann sphere. Okay, i-coconnect mo siya dun. Okay, so using straight line. Ngayon, nung connect mo siya dun, nung tumama na siya dun sa dulong yun, ngayon, anong yari? Tumama siya ng isang beses dun sa, sa surface ng sphere. Yun yung ina-explain ni stereographic projection. Sa so, Z-plane, kung gusto mong i-plot yung W, yung isang complex number mo dun, ipa-plot mo dun sa affinity ng, ng ating Riemann sphere, dun sa point of affinity niya, isang beses yung tatama within dun sa sphere. Isang beses lang tatama. Kaya yun siya. So, parang nangyari, correspondent. Okay? So, parang naging one-to-one -one correspondent. So, sa Z-plane, ito ako. Sa surface, nandito ako. Okay? So, kunyari, nag-3D, ito ako. Ito yung graph ko. Ayun na in-explain yung stereography projection. So, sir, ano obligation yan? So, sa Mobius transformation, mas marami tayong pag-uusapan about yan. Pero, for the meantime, yan muna in-explain ko about stereographic projection. So, gusto na ipakita na function din siya. Okay? Function in, 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 in a way na domain mo yung Z-plane. Okay? So, nag one to one correspondent siya. To, so, ang function is parang ipa-plot mo siya or dapat mag-map or mag-connect siya dun sa North Pole, dun sa ating affinity. Then, ngayon, magkakaroon ng value which yung range dun sa may Riemann sphere. So, dun siya tatama isang beses. Okay, yan yung explain stereographic projection. Okay, so next is the theorem number 3. So, again, hindi ka dito familiar. This is theorem number 3. Pero, napaka-common lang yan. Let Z not and W not be points on Z and W plane respectively. So, yun yung pinag-uusapan. Then, the limit of F of Z is equal to infinity as Z approaches Z not. So, tandaan na, mag-equal siya sa infinity if and only if yung limit ng 1 over F of Z is equal to 0. So, tama naman, no? So, kunyari, yung limit ng 1 over F of Z is equal to Z approaches to 0. Kunyari, 1 over Z squared approaches to 0 pag specific Z not. So, and therefore, yung limit ng F of Z lang is infinity. Kasi nga, ibig sabihin, lumalaki yung value ng limit sa ilalim. So, parang substitute ko lang sa ilalim yung limit ng F of Z. 1 over limit ng F of Z as Z approaches Z not. Infinity yun. So, 1 over infinity, 0. Yun yung ibig sabihin niya. Okay, next is number 2, 3.2. Limit of F of Z is equal to W not as Z approaches Z not. Uh, infinity if and only limit ng 1 over f of z so similar let ito naman approaches w not okay kaso binago dito from infinity dito from 0 so ito naman magiging w not okay ito pag infinity approaches w not ito pag 0 equal naman sa w not okay 1 over f of z so somewhere na may kita mo yan magagamit natin yan somewhere so may kita mo na o nga no ginamit ni sir ay so papakita ko na lang later on so sa mga next example sa mga next topic natin Okay, the number 3, limit ng F of Z as Z approaches infinity is equal to infinity. If in only, if in limit ng 1 over F of 1 over Z as Z approaches 0 is equal to 0. So, if in only F, if, in, if in only if yan, so, pwedeng ito papunta doon, ito papunta dyan. Okay, so, yan yung theorem 3. So, kung pansin mo, iba siya doon sa advanced calculus, iba siya doon sa, sa real number. So, may ganyan pala siya dyan. Okay, so, next is, gamitin natin example. So, gamitin natin yung mga theorem. So, mga property. So, yung limit para ma-evaluate natin dito. Note na pag naglagay ako nung parang absolute value, modulus natin dito yun. Okay, tanda mga pag naglagay ako ng uh, dalawang straight line, vertical line, that is modulus. Hindi tayo nag-uusap dito about absolute value, modulus. Ang absolute value natin dito is modulus. Okay, so number one, use the above theorem to evaluate the limits. So, ang gagawin ko, hiwahiwalay ko muna siya before natin i-apply. Okay, so limit ng 2 modulus of z plus i z squared plus 2.5 minus i. Okay, so una, the property, yung theorem number 2, yung pwede siya maghiwalay. This is, ilalabas ko yung 2, then limit, as z approaches 1 plus 2i ng modulus of z. Plus, ilalabas ko yung i, kasi number na lang siya dyan, as limit ng z squared, as z approaches 1 plus 2i. Okay, then plus limit ng z is equal to 1 plus 2i ng 2.5 minus limit as z approaches 1 plus 2i ng i. Okay, note na ito, i-apply ko na yung mga limit na yan. So, this is equivalent sa 2 times modulus ng 1 plus 2i. Okay, then plus i. Then, this is 1 plus 2i raised sa 2. Then, yung limit ng constant din dito is constant itself. So, this is plus 
5. Yung limit ng i is just i. Kasi kinoconsider natin siya as constant dito. So, this is minus i. Then, simplify further. This is equivalent sa 2 square root ng 1 squared plus 2 squared. So, bakit na ganyan? Kasi modulus. Then, plus i multiplied by 1 plus 4i minus 4. So, paano naging minus 4? Kasi 2i times 2i is 2i, 4i squared. So, negative 4 yan. Plus 2.5 minus i. Lastly, this is equivalent sa 2 square root of 5. Tama. Then, plus, distribute ko to. Ah, sorry, simplify mo na. i times 4i minus 3 plus 2.5 minus i. Then, simplify further, this is equivalent sa 2 square root of 5 minus 4i times i is 4, negative 4, minus 3i plus 2.5 minus i. So, simplify, pagsamahin natin yung mga may i, tapos yung wala. So, negative 4 plus 2.5 is negative 1.5. Tama? Negative 1.5 or 3 over 2. So, this is equivalent sa 2 square root of 5 minus 1.5 yung isa okay then uh, minus oh sorry plus i labas ko lang yung negative 3 minus 1 kasi dapat nga solve ko yun negative 3i minus i is negative 4i so, therefore ang sagot dito is equivalent sa 2 square root of 5 minus 1.5 minus 4i so kung gusto mo pa simplify yung 2 square root of 5 minus 1.5 okay lang din naman pero okay na ako dito Okay, kasi magkakaroon na yung decimal eh. Okay, so ganyan ginagamit or ina-apply yung mga theorem natin dito. So, similar lang din pagkuha ng limit natin. Okay, so let's have example number 2. So, the limit of z, e raised to z, as z approaches 3 pi i. Okay, so medyo tricky. Pero at least, exactong substitute na lang siya. Okay, so this is, equiv this is equivalent sa uh, substitute niya that is 3 pi i then e raised to 3 pi i tama, doon din may magagawa pa ba tayo after nyan, so e raised to 3 pi i I don't know kung pwede ko pa siyang gawin, pero wait ha, isipin ko e raised to pi i ah okay, tama, so meron kasing brilliant equation, nang sabi may equation na ganito, e raised to pi i plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay? So, therefore, e raised to pi i is equal to negative 1. So, may tawag dyan eh. Nabas, nakita ko yun sa YouTube. So, that is parang beautiful equation. Hindi <laughs> ko alam ba't beautiful equation. So, meaning, ang gagawin ko dito, this is equal sa 3 pi i, then e raised to pi i raised sa 3. So, meaning, ito ay equivalent sa 3 pi i multiplied by negative 1 raised to 3. So, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So, therefore, this is equivalent sa negative 3 pi i. So, ang galing niya, sir. Naisip ko pa yun. Actually, on the spot ko siya. So, buti naalala ko din yung beautiful, beautiful equation. Nakalimutan ko tawag. May tawag dyan. So, true yan. Totoo yan. May ganyan equation. Okay. So, proceed tayo sa number 3. So, sabi naman sa number 3, yung limit nang z approaches 1 minus i as, ah sorry, z limit ng 2xy minus i x squared plus i y squared as z approaches 1 minus i. Okay, so ang obvious nyan sir, 1 kama negative 1. So meaning 1 si x, negative 1 si y. Ganun po yung gagawin pag sinapsitute lamin. Pero ayokong gawin yun. So bakit? Ang gagawin ko, gusto ko maging in terms of z muna lahat yan. Ulit ah, ang gagawin ko, gusto maging internal. So, ibig sabihin sir, gagamitin namin yung parang ginawa natin sa last video na x is equal to z plus z bar over 2, y is equal to z minus z bar over 2i. Okay, so, pwede yun. Pero may naiisip ako na mas magandang solution. Okay, so, ito na lang lalagay ko dito. Consider natin dito si 2xy minus i x squared plus i y squared. So, baka makaisip ka rin na ito. Malay mo, makatulong to Magamit ko dun sa may previous video na, okay, ganito ko na ang gagawin. Katulad na ginagawa ng set. Okay. So, ang gagawin ko, yung 2, pwede ko siyang gawing negative, negative. So, negative of negative 2. So, pwede siyang gawing ganito. Negative of negative 2 xy minus i 
x squared plus i y squared. Tama? So, wala naman akong ginawang epekto. Next, yung negative 1 doon ay gagawin kong i squared. Tama? Negative 1 is i squared eh. So, this is equivalent sa negative ng i squared. Sorry, i squared 2xy minus i squared plus i y squared. Next, ipapactor out ko sa lahat ng yan yung i, isang i lang. So, pag pinactor out ko yung i na isa, may natira ditong negative i 2xy. Tama kasi may i squared dyan eh. Minus ito ay magiging x squared plus y squared. Okay then, ano pa ba gagawin sir? Uh, ilalabas ko yung ating negative dyan. So probably kunyari nilabas ko yung negative that is equivalent sa wait lang check ko lang din yung values. Ah, okay. Sorry. Uh, equivalent yan sa ano ba factor nito? Ang factor nito is arrange ko nga konti. This is I multiplied by Y squared minus X squared minus I 2XY. Okay. So, ipapactor ko lang yun dyan. So, parang equivalent siya sa Y minus So, Y minus So, parang equivalent siya dito. So, this is i times y minus ix. I think ganyan. Or plus. Wait ha, check ko yung value. So, kung ganun mangyari, I think hindi. Tapos naka squared. Okay, so check ko lang ha. So, y squared minus i squared x squared. Ah, okay. So, plus. Ah, okay. So, I think hindi ko siya kaya i-factor using yun. So, sorry about dun. Hindi yata exacto yung pag-factor ko. Hindi ko sure kung mali yung given. Pero, hindi kasi exacto yung factoring pag-factor ni sir eh. Dapat kasi supposed to be, ang mangyari dyan is, yung i squared nilabas ko, dun may negative pa. Okay, so kung sinama ko yung negative, maging, posit, maging negative yung y squared, positive yung x squared, negative yung positive yun. So parang x squared plus 2 is negative yung dulo. And then, so hindi rin factorable. So to x to. Tama? So x pagdating dyan. So, ayoko na gawin kasi literal. Sorry ah, ang nangyari kasi nung pinaktor ko, hindi nag-exacto. Yung kasi una ko iniisip kanina eh. Okay, pwede ko i-apply itong gantong method para ma-factor ko. So, since hindi ko kaya i-factor, sir, sabi mo sir, gagawin mo Z eh. Kaso, imagine nyo ah, pag nilagay ko pa yung Z dyan, hindi na kasya. Okay? So, probably, apply ko na lang agad yung limit. Okay? So, pasensya na about dun. So, sir, paasa ka. Hindi, hindi naman. So, this is equivalent sa limit ng 2XY as Z approaches 1 minus I minus i ng limit ng x squared as z approaches 1 minus i plus i ng limit ng y squared as z approaches 1 minus i okay so pasan siya about dun ha so note that ano x dyan x is 1 y is negative 1 sa ganyang value so this is equivalent sa 2 times 1 times negative 1 minus i times 1 squared plus i times negative 1 squared okay so this is equivalent sa negative 2 minus i minus i so therefore this is equivalent sa negative 2 minus 2i so ito yung kanyang sagot so sorry about dito hindi ko rin any, hindi ko rin napansin yung sign kasi naisip ko nga ang gagawin ko uh, exacto sana eh kung ganyan lumabas ang dali so, parang Z-bar siya or something na ibang representation. So, nangyari nga baliktad. Hindi ko nakuha exactong gusto ko mangyari. Okay, so pasensya about that. Okay, so next natin is about continuity ng complex variable o ng f of z. Ay ko, basahin ko muna. Uh, bago tayo nag-start. So, a function f is said to be continuous 
at Z is equal to Z not if it satisfies the following. So, similar din to sa may advanced calculus dati, o yung parang elementary definition ng continuity, F of Z is defined at Z is equal to Z not. So, meaning i-evaluate mo lang yung F of Z not. Okay, number 2, the limit of F of Z at Z approaches Z not exists. Okay, and lastly, yung limit ng F of Z at Z approaches Z not is equal sa F of Z not. Okay, so pag nangyari yun, therefore, yung F of Z is continuous at Z is equal to Z not sa specific point. Okay, next is meron din siyang epsilon delta definition of continuity. So, kung gusto mo yun yung gamitin mo, okay lang. Pero, moreover, ito yung pag-uusapan natin dito. Itong Z is equal to Z not. So, mas importante kasi ito eh. Okay, so nakalag dyan, if yung ah, uh, sabi, if f of z is equal to u of x comma y plus i b of x comma y, u and b must be continuous at z is equal to z not if f of z is continuous. So, walang if dapat in. So, kunyari ah, kung yung f of z mo continuous, dapat yung real part niya sa imaginary part din niya continuous. So, tandaan mo yan. Importante yan. Kasi nga, gagamitin natin yan somewhere sa Cauchy-Riemann equation. So, una, i-verify natin kung continuous yung real part sa imaginary part ng f of z. After nun, saka mo pwede apply yung uh, equation. Ganun yung gagawin. So, ulit ha. Sa, sa limit, kung kung kaya mo kunin yung liko, nag exist yung limit ng buo. nag exist yung limit ng real part sa imaginary part. Yun yung sabi ng theorem. Dito naman, sa continuity, kung nag exist kung continuous siya at specific point, as a whole, continuous din yung parts niya, yung real parts sa imaginary part niya, dun sa specific point na yun. Ay, ini-emphasize naman nito Okay. So, ngayon, let's have example. So, nagawa na natin ito dati, alam ko. So, determine if, if f of z is equal to z squared plus 4 over z squared plus 9 is continuous at z is equal to i. So, tatlo yung test ko naalala mo. Una, verify mo siya yung f of z not. Pangalawa, yung number 2, yung limit niya as i, as z approaches i. Then lastly, dapat equal sila. Okay, so check natin kung continuous at z is equal to i. Okay, so start natin. So, una, test 1. So, check natin yung f of i. No, consider that is f of i. f of i is equivalent to i squared plus 4 over i squared plus 9. And that is equivalent sa negative 1 plus 4 over negative 1 plus 9 which is equal sa 3 over 8. So, ito da yung value ng f of i. Okay, next din naman sa limit. So, sa limit, number 2, o test 2, yung limit as z approaches i nung z squared plus 4 over z squared plus 9. So, wala naman tayo masisimplify dyan. Wala naman mga cancel. Kung mag-factor man tayo, wala din tayo mga cancel. So, directly, apply natin yung i. So, that is equal sa i squared plus 4 over i squared plus 9. Which is also equivalent sa 3 over so, as you can see, for test 3, note that yung limit nung f of z, as z approaches i, is equal lang sa f of i. Okay? So, f of z is continuous at z is equal to i. Okay? So, therefore, continuous siya. Ganun ka simple. So, ito lang naman yung, parang nirecall ko lang, hindi ko na masyadong na-emphasize yan. Kasi nga, definition na naman continuity. So, importante dito talaga si limit sa kasi derivative. So, proceed tayo sa next definition. Okay, so let's have definition. So, sabi nga earlier dito sa video na ito, uh, sinabi ko na ang topic is limit and continuity. Pero magkakaroon ako ng konting, konting introduction about differentiation or about derivative. So, meaning, dito kasi, sa pagkuha ng derivative ng complex number, ilan ng way? So, meron tayong uh, definition of derivative the Karate-Dori lemma then the Cauchy-Riemann equation okay, ayun na, ayun siya so lastly is yung mga formula, so apat dapat dito eh, so gamitin mo yung mga formula yung derivative ng, yung power rule, yung quotient rule meron yun, next is ito yung definition of derivative next is yung Karate-Dori lemma, next and lastly is yung Cauchy-Riemann equation, okay, so for the meantime introduction ko, ang gagamitin ko yung definition of derivative so let's have, let's have definition. So, let it be a complex function. F is said to be complex differentiable at z is equal to z not. So, meaning at specific point yung pinag-uusapan. If 
f prime of z naught is equal to limit ng f of z minus f of z naught over z minus z naught as z approaches z naught. So, yan yung una, unang definition. Pangalong definition, f of z naught, f prime of z naught is equal to limit as delta z approaches 0 ng f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z over delta z. So, yung number 2, yung 4 step rule na ginagawa nyo sa calculus 1. Okay, yan yung 4 step rule. Yung number 1 yung gagamitin natin. Okay, ulit. Yung number 2, yan yung 4 step rule na alam mo. So, una, apply mo yung ganito kung naalala mo si 4 step rule. So, ang gagamitin ko lagi si number 1. Ang tawag dyan, definition of derivative. Ang tawag dito, definition of derivative. Ito yung way para makuha natin definition of deriv derivative. Yan. May word dyan na complex differentiable. Okay? So, may word na complex differentiable dyan. Ngayon, yung complex differentiable, minsan, mababasa mo siya as holomorphic. So, pag sinabing holomorphic, meaning complex differentiable din. Next. Pwede rin na analytic. Okay. So, tatlong bagay. Pag sinabi ko, show that f of z is analytic, meaning differentiable. Show that f of z is holomorphic, meaning differentiable. Yun yung pinapagawa ko. Okay. So, let's have example. Meaning, ito yung gagamitin ko. Ito pwede naman, pero gagamitin ko yung number 1. Mas madali kasing gamitin si 1, unlike key 2. Mahaba kasi kay 2, may delta si pang nag-exist. Okay, so, ang sabi, show that f of z, show that f of z is equal to z squared, is holomorphic at z is equal to z naught. So, meaning everywhere. Kasi wala tayong exact eh. Okay, kasi dapat ang tanong, show that f of z is equal to z squared, is holomorphic at z is equal to 2 plus i. Mga ganun dapat eh. So, meaning differentiable ba ako at this point? Ngayon, ang ginasabi, differentiable ba ako to z naught? So, meaning arbitrarily. So, meaning everywhere, sa lahat ba? Sa buong complex plane ba? Or sa buong domain ba ng complex variable natin? Is, uh, ano ako, differentiable or holomorphic. Okay, so, since show, ito ay proving. Okay, so, using definition of derivative. Note, ang tawag din, definition of derivative. Okay, so, here's the proof. Okay, so, consider... Consider si f prime of z naught. Okay, so by definition of derivative, this is equivalent sa f of z minus f of z naught over z minus z naught. Tama? Next. Applying the function, yung complex variable, this is z squared minus z naught squared. Sir, bakit z naught squared? F of z naught, ipapalit ko doon. All over z minus z naught. Okay, and may nakalimutan sir, ilagay. Nakalagay, nakalimutan lagay sir yung limit. Sorry. Limit as z approaches z naught. Then dito rin. Limit as z approaches z naught. Okay, next. Sa, ah, kung function siya, hindi mo siya pwede i-factor. Kung limit siya, pwede. Tama, pwede ka mag-cancel, pwede ka mag-factor kasi hindi na-apektohan yung domain. Okay, so this is equivalent sa limit. A z approaches z naught ng z plus z naught times z minus z naught all over z minus z naught. Okay, so obviously cancel yan eh. So, sir, cancel po. Yes, ito, cancel to Cancel yan. Okay, so therefore, ang kinukuha na lang natin is the limit as z approaches z naught ng z plus z naught. Okay, then apply the limit that is z naught, papayitan ko yung z ng z naught plus z naught which is equal sa 2 z naught. Okay? So, tama naman. Ano ba derivative ni 2z? Ang derivative ni 2z is, ang derivative ni z squared is 2z. So, ang derivative nung pag z na, 2z na. Okay? So, lagay mo dito. So, f of z, which is equal sa z squared, is holomorphic. Is holomorphic at z is equal to z na. And this is done using definition of derivative. So, ito kasi yung nabubas ng sagot. So, sir, kailan ba masabi hindi siya holomorphic? For example, 1 over z naught, o kaya 1 over 0, nag-undefine yung sagot or infinity, hindi siya holomorphic. Nakayun yung mga possible. O, kanyari, uh, 
dahil limit to, so possible dito may indeterminate form, basta mga ganun sagot, so kunyari, umabot sa point na indeterminate form yung sagot, or undefined, yung 1 over 0 something mga ganun, so therefore, holo, hindi siya holomorphic ganun kasimple okay, so proceed tayo sa number 2 number 2 Prove that f of z is equal to 1 over z squared is analytic. Sorry, mali ng spelling. Sorry. Uh, at z is equal to 2 plus i. So, iba dito yung z nat. Yung z nat natin mismo is 2 plus i. Okay? So, yung z nat natin mismo dito is 2 plus i. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko, at the end of the proof, doon ko ilalagay, i-apply si z, si 2 plus i. So, ang gagawin mo, kukunin ko muna yung f prime of z nat. So, ito yung proof. Consider natin si f prime of z naught. So, f prime of z naught is equal to limit as z approaches z naught nung f of z minus f of z naught all over z minus z naught. Next, apply yung ating mga function. So, this is limit as z approaches z naught ng 1 over z minus 1 over z naught. So, tama naman. Then, over z minus z naught. Okay, next. After kaya apply yan, uh, konting manipulation sa taas, this is limit as z approaches z naught ng this is z naught minus z over z z not then all over z minus z not so tama naman okay so next is manipulate ulit natin so by i-reciprocal natin denominator so this is limit as z approaches z not nang ilalabas ko yung negative dito gagawin kong z minus z not over z then z not so nilabas ko yung negative dun then multiplied by itong z minus z naught magiging 1 over z minus z naught. So, nagets mo bakit ko nilabas yung negative doon. Okay? So, dito, pwede natin itong cancel in. Okay? So, therefore, ano natira? Uh, ang natira is limit as z approaches z naught ng negative 1 over z and z naught. Okay? Then, applying the limit, so, dito na lang, so, pag in-apply limit, that is negative of 1 over z naught multiplied by z naught, which is equal to 1 over z naught squared. Okay, since z naught natin is equal to 2 plus i, okay? this is equivalent to 1 over 2 plus i raised to 2. Okay, then, konting simplify pa natin, manipulation pa natin yan. So, obviously, this, equi this is equivalent sa 1, negative 1 over, this is 4, plus 4i minus 1, tama? O, or simply, this is negative 1 over 3 plus 4i. Ngayon, ayaw ni complex number na may i sa ilalim, so meaning, magkakonjugate tayo. So, we conjugate natin yan. That is, mumultiply sa 3 minus 4i over 3 minus 4i. Okay. So, therefore, ang sagot is equivalent sa negative ng 3 minus 4i all over. Uh, that is 9 minus 4 or maging 9 plus 4 is that is 16. Okay. Or, this is simply uh, negative 3 over 16 plus i over 4 kasi 4 over 16 yun. Okay, so f prime of z ah sorry, f of z so f of z is analytic analytic at z is equal to 2 plus i and this is done. Okay, so, ganun ka simple. So, sir, bakit nun sabi yung analytic? This kasi is also an element of complex number. Hindi siya undefined, hindi siya something na ganun. Okay, so, sir, bakit ka nag-conjugate? Kasi nga, nasa ilalim pa yung i. Okay, so, check mo lang. 2 plus i raised sa 2, that is 4 plus 4i plus i squared. So, kaya minus 1. So, that is 4 minus 1, 3. So, 3 plus 4i. So, nag-multiply ako ng 3 minus 4i. 
over 3 minus 4i. So, pag-apply na conjugate. So, up, after nun, uh, nangyari, that is 9 squared plus 4i squared. 4 squared i squared or 16i squared. So, mangyari, yung negative 16, kasi negative 16, magiging negative times negative 1, so that's positive. So, 9 plus 6, so 9 plus 16. So, that probably, hindi pala dapat 16, no? So, 9 plus 3, that is 25. Okay, so sorry, apply natin. This is 25. Okay, so this is 25. So, ito ay 4 to i 25. So, buti nag-check si sir ng sagot. Okay, so therefore, ayun yung sagot. So, ngayon, na-check mo. Okay, complex number siya. Since complex number siya, therefore, makakonclude ko, analytic or holomorphic pa rin siya. Doon sa specific na point na binigay. So, again, kailan hindi magiging analytic or holomorphic? Pag undefined, pag indeterminate uh, form, yung mga ganun sagot doon yung possible na hindi siya holomorphic. So, ngayon, ang tawag sa ginagawa natin ito is definition of derivative. Ito yung unang way para makuha mo yung derivative. Okay, definition of derivative. Tandaan. Okay, so sa mga next video, hihiwalay ko si Karate Dori Lema. Dadamihan ko yun. Next is si Cushy Riemann Equation. So, special din yun. Then, after nun, balik tayo sa mga elementary function. Manong elementary function, magkakaroon tayo ng trigo, exponential, yung logarithm, yung ln, Okay, so kunyari, e raised to g. Ang gusto mong gawin, 2i raised to i. So, isosolve natin yun. So, ganito karami tong complex number na to. Ganito karami tong complex analysis to. So, matagal-tagal ba tayo bago mag-derivative? Actually, may graph theory pa to. So, may mga path graph. So, may mga graph pa talaga. May parang graph theory din to. So, ganito kalawak to. May linear algebra din to. Okay, so hoping na nag-enjoy ka sa video. Hoping na may natutunan ka. So, isa lang lagi paalala ko. Manood ka, hindi para... Okay sir, ito ay para sa'yo. So, nag-effort ako dito na gawin ito. Nakata nyo naman. So, makita mo kung paano ako mag-solve or mag-position dito o paano yung position ko sa pag-video is something na napakahirap. Nakadapa, in which ngawit na ngawit ka. So, may instances talaga nakikita mo, may hinto ako. So, talagang nakakapagod. So, hoping na yung effort ko, suklian mo rin ng effort. So, mano man lang yung makinig ka, hindi ko naman sinasabing kailangan maintindihan mo lahat. Ayun lang naman. So, dapat nag-enjoy ka aralin mo. Fourth year ka na, then kaya mo yan.